Hi, Todd. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us for our Color Vision interview. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. Um, and thank you for uh, allowing me to participate. That's great. Thank you, Todd. So before we begin, I wanted to ask you, what color could define your mood in this moment? Well, right now, I'm really feeling as if my color mood is blue. You're feeling blue. Okay, that's great. Tell me a little bit more, like, what does this color, what memory does this color trigger for you? Well, actually, for me, it's not so much about a memory. It's about what, what I feel I'm experiencing right now in real time. And blue for me doesn't necessarily mean that I feel depressed or unhappy. But I'm recalling now, you know, um, watching television, watching news reports from, from all over the world. And, you know, with the fact that people are, are traveling less, people aren't using their cars so much, that there is this real sort of cleansing of the environment. And I was very much taken by some of the photography that I've seen of some major cities around the world. And right. to be able to see these very clear blue skies and blue waters, to me, I really, really resonated with me and just really showed what, you know, sort of uh, caring about the planet could actually look like when we're actually forced to actually do something. Well, that's beautiful, Todd. That's beautiful. And to tell us a little bit more about you, what is your passion in life? Well, my passion in life has always been about uh, actually two things, people and animals, okay? Those are the two things that I feel, you know, um, you know kind of dedicated to in the fact of, of being able to care for other people that maybe have problems or issues, taking care of pets, obviously, because that's something and, you know, they can't take care of themselves. So they need to have people that are, that are advocates of them. So, I mean, I would say that that's really kind of a, a personal passion of mine. Okay, that's great. And what is your field of expertise and what do you do in life? Well, I'm actually a, a creative director for the Pantone Color Institute. And I work with a lot of uh, third party clients in helping them to develop their product lines, um, helping them to decide on colors and the material finishes that they are actually going to apply. And most of the work is being done for consumer products um, some of it is uh, done for environments and projects having to do with um, uh, shopping malls and, and, and places where people uh, are living and visiting and working. So it's really a kind of a, a very broad spectrum of the type of projects that I have been working on over the last several years. That's awesome. That's awesome. And how are you personally navigating this current pandemic? Well, I think it's been a challenge, not just for me, but for, for everyone out there in the world. And, you know, uh, there, there certainly has been some roadblocks, you know, because of the, the, the work that I ordinarily would have seen very early on in the year has sort of been paused for a while and put on hold so that people can actually, you know, make decisions about how they see their product development projects going forward. And some of them, you know, just being a little bit delayed, um, nobody entirely canceling things because people still have to manufacture goods and um, they still have to deliver things into stores. So, uh, but there has been an absolute pause, you know, on the way people are working right now. And they're kind of going through this, this period of uh, re-strategizing and, and reprioritizing you know, what they actually need to do in terms of product development. Right. So exactly, because as you say, re-strategizing and stuff like that. So because what is for you the vision for the aftermath of this pandemic? And what do you think people and the world actually needs after this? Well, I think one of the things that they're going to do is they're going to sort of reevaluate what do I make? How do I make it? And most importantly, where I make it. And that is become a very sore spot, I think, for a lot of people around the world. Because I don't think that many people realize how vulnerable you know, we all are and how subject we are to a supply chain. You know, because we never think of it in terms of us personally. We you know, think of it in terms of the, the companies that we're gonna actually purchase a product from. So I think that there is definitely going to be a reevaluation on 
how people control where something is going to be made. And I see it right now in the US that people are absolutely dumbfounded, you know, when it comes to uh, protective equipment being used for doctors, for nurses, for people that actually need it, and realizing that almost virtually none of it, or very, very little, is actually manufactured in this country. And a lot of even the European countries too have just really laid bare this, this, this feeling and this acknowledgement, hey, wait a minute, all of this stuff that we take for granted is being made in China or in some other part of the world and we have very little control. Okay. And I think that companies, we are gonna start to take back some of that control and start figuring out, okay, you can, you can continue to produce this over here, but we need to have something that is logistically closer and something that we can act upon in real time based on need. Right, so you said a lot of things, and uh, I, think, I think that too, that are gonna change on the business perspectives. And what do you think this could mean for uh, values in our society? Do you think this will create new values? And do you think this will actually change the way humans interact between them? Well, on the most positive side, you know, from bad, I always believe can come some good. So I'm really hoping that, you know, uh, ordinary people, consumers around the world are gonna start to look at the way we're treating each other, the way that we actually consider what we buy, how we consume things, and really start looking at things that are going to not only make ourselves feel better, but are also gonna be important for the person that's sitting next to us. Because, you know, we've lived in such a, an egocentric world for such a long time that I think that people are starting to, you know, sort of reconsider, you know, how they treat another person. And I think that that is going to be very important. And I truly hope that that will start to manifest itself and start to really stick. And hopefully more and more people will make it a part of their, their new way of living. Absolutely, yeah, more, more human connection. Yes. And for you personally, as a creative, how do you see yourself contributing to the change and what will be your strategy? And also, do you see your way of work changing in any way? Well, the way of work, I think the way some of, some of the way we're going to interact with clients now is going to be much more in a more mobile way. Because, you know, traditionally, I've always had to be present, you know, in workshops around the world, working with a specific client and the design groups on actually creating the, um, the, the colors and the material finishes for the products. But right now, we're challenged. And the fact is, is that there is a lot of travel that is not deemed possible right now because we are not allowed to travel. But the fact is, is that people aren't going to stop doing what they're doing. So we have, you know, actually have to adapt to that way of working. Doesn't mean we'll never go to the, we'll never go to the client. It just simply means that we're going to have to maybe, you know, uh, take a break from this trip and we're going to have to work with you in a more virtual way. And if I have to sit up in the middle of the night because the client is 13 hours ahead, well, that's part of partnership. That's part of doing business. And, you know, I'm willing to put myself, you know, um, make myself feel a little inconvenient, but that's part of working together and really, you know, able to, you know, help them accomplish their goals. Right, so yeah, adapting to each other's uh, possibilities and the reality that surrounds us. Correct. And, and for you, like, on a, on a human perspective, what is your vision for human beings and their personal environment? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting because when I was watching the news the other day, and I, I referred to this at the beginning of our talk, is when we take a look at the, the natural cleansing of the environment right now, the fact is, is that when you don't have an inordinate amount of uh, air travel and people are not using their cars, we're not polluting the air and the water. So it's very interesting to see in such a short period of time how some of these cities appear now and it's almost as if you don't even recognize them because we're so accustomed to looking at them being very, quite honestly, dirty so, and polluted. So you know, when you look at it now and you see it, you go, wow, is that LA? 
You know, is that Delhi? Is that Mumbai? You know, it, it's really, it's quite surreal, you know, to me. When I saw a picture of the waters in Venice, I was like, oh my God. And I'd been to Venice several times. You could never see through the water, you know? It's filled with dirt and, and everything from having these huge ships coming in and whatever. Now you look at this blue water that you can almost see is crystallizing and you can kind of see through it. So to me, that's kind of truly amazing. And it's a good feeling. Absolutely, absolutely. And we hope we can move, uh, we can actually take those, the reality we see today and bring it with us. Uh, I hope so. I hope we don't forget. I hope we don't forget. Because we have a tendency as humans to forget. And, and finally, like for you, uh, from a creative perspective, how do you visualize the digital transformation that we're going through? Well, the digital transformation is going to be huge because now that we do have a computers, you know, in this age, we have the ability to actually uh, be together, to actually be able to collaborate. You know, when I started working in the fashion industry before computers, the only way you ever knew what was going on is if you went somewhere physically, okay? It was the only way in which you could experience um, a product development process or working with a client or visiting a vendor or, or a trade show or whatever. But now we do have this, this visualization through the digital environment that gives us a lot. Now, it never totally replaces the, the in-person uh, uh, collaboration, but it certainly will help to um, aid us in this time period so that the work doesn't have to stop completely and that there are still many things that we can still do so that we can keep up with a work process. Yeah, for sure. We can, we can keep moving even though the things around us stop and, in, and we can't get together. Correct. For sure. Well, Todd, this has been very interesting. Thank you very, very much for joining us. And I hope we can have a chat again very soon. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Take care, Todd.